Philosophers. Philosophers. Oh, what a week. So, do you want to know what the topic for today is, David? Probably the one that we specified last week. Uh, that's right. So the topic of the day is uh, why truth matters, um, broadly speaking. We'll get down into the more nuance of that. So let's begin where we always begin and really talk about what we're talking about. What is truth? You know, mm -hmm. uh, we kind of covered that in our first episode uh, and last week. And last week. So I don't feel like we really need to go too much into it. If you want to know what those things, what, what we are talking about when we say truth, you can uh, give those a fresh listen. Um, so. Uh, Additionally, what I wanted to talk about, uh, in addition to why truth matters, too, is uh, uh, is the truth good. That's kind of the thing for me I wanted to also go into, because I feel like you can, uh, those two things are not mutually exclusive. Um, and I have had people before, you know, write off something that is true because they did not believe it was good for people to know that thing, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so that's kind of where, uh, we're coming from with this. So, um, let's just get started into this. Um, we, we, we talked about what truth is, but David, why does the truth matter to you? Why does the truth matter to me? Interesting. Mm hmm. Hmm. Well, there's a couple of reasons. One would be a reason that we discussed last week, which is that, uh, well, by understanding the truth, then I can essentially get what I want. I can use it as a tool, use my knowledge of the truth as a tool to achieve things that I want to achieve. Um, but on a more human level than that, I think uh, just plain curiosity. Uh, it matters to me intrinsically. I, uh, I want to know what's true. Mm -hmm. Now, um, for me, uh, I, very similar to your first point, uh, I believe the truth is good for achieving, you know, what you would like to achieve in life, or at least assisting in that. Um, and to expand on that a little more, you know, for me, the truth is reality. Mm -hmm. You know, or reality is truth. They are one and the same. They are one and the same. So if you as an individual want to have any impact on reality. And I, I tend to believe that we can affect reality. Now, certainly we are limited, you know, being human beings, and even with our technology in its current state, limited. Um, but that doesn't mean we always necessarily have to be in certain areas. But before you, you know, even go into how can we affect reality, you need to be able to understand reality. You know, you need to be able to understand how what you will do uh, will affect the outcome of that action, I guess, or to clean that dialogue up, you know, how to get what you want based on what you do, which is what we are talking about. Understanding and expecting the consequences of your actions. Right. Or expect, yeah, um, you know, having strong expectations or at the least having, you know, inclinations right. as to what it's going to be. And I guess additionally... You know, you could be chasing a good or chasing something you want, but you can also be running away from something you don't want as well. And I think that's honestly the place where the truth is more Im immediately important mm -hmm. because the truth oftentimes is, you know, looked at based on things in the past. You know, we, right. we don't generally look into the future for truth because we experience time in a linear fashion. And in particular... In our culture, when we think about what there is to learn from the past, we think about these are the mistakes that people made. Right. Let's not do them again. Exactly. Not, and, you know, there, there is a little bit of here's something good somebody did and here's how we can do it again. But it's mostly about here's how everybody screwed up. Let's avoid that. Right. And that's human biology in a lot of ways as well. You know, we tend to exaggerate our fears and negativity far so over the things we enjoy and positivity. Well, and there's something logical about that, that, um, you know, we can, we can do whatever we want until it ends badly. 
Right. And so it only really matters what ends badly and everything else is open because it's a, it's apparently either good or inconsequential. Right. And so, you know, for me in, in both of those things, you know, uh, looking to the future, you know, and trying to change things you want or looking in the past and, and trying to avoid things that you've done before, it, you had to know the truth in all those things or the better you understand the truth or the closer you are to the truth, the more accurately you can avoid negativity and chase positivity. It's a two-edged sword in that way that's beneficial in both ways, I guess. Right. Uh, which kind of ruins the metaphor, but whatever. Um, and to me, that's very important, you know, because I'm, I'm a person that believes in uh, strongly in individual ability and individual uh, ability and capability um and i've always you know since i was you know this might go to my my personal life but when i was a kid i always wanted to change the world i don't know that everyone else has a fantasy like that or what but i've always wanted to change things you know i've never been content with things how they were not to say that i haven't ever been happy um because i get accused of that you know a whole lot not being happy because i'm never content but for me, you know, everything can be taken advantage of to push the boundaries of what we can achieve. And if you don't do that in your personal life, I don't understand how people as a society can do that either. You know, so for me on the, you know, stepping out of the personal level and looking at the societal level, for me, society is just a group of individuals and they should always be treated as individuals. And if the individual's are informed of the truth or they are all chasing the truth in that way. And we can, uh, you know, share that with each other. Uh, we can, as a group, move up because we're each moving up individually. And um, another thing, you know, to kind of consider with that as well, when we're talking about all, you know, moving up and sharing the truth and things like that. Um, the reason I think the truth is special and I, and I, I highly, you know, distaste people who actively discourage the truth, you know, um, to, to a fault, you know, uh, you know, I'll even accuse people of blissful ignorance, you know, and I hold that as immoral, but not to go too far into that. Mean, willful ignorance? Yeah. Well, ignorance in general is immoral from, you know, I think. Immoral? Yes. Ignorance? Yes. Or willful ignorance? Both. One to a it is degree immoral to not know something. Yes. How? Uh, we can get into that in a later episode. <laughs> but, you know, see, I understand where you're coming from, where it's like, that seems really awful or bad or wrong, you know. Um, and that's why I say to a fault, because I haven't fully worked that out. But I just detest ignorance, you know, uh, when it comes to, uh, especially willful ignorance. We'll just stick to that one for time being. Okay. And not to go too far into it. Uh, but... Um, and uh, people who actively move others away from the truth because I I just can't I just can't stand knowing that you know we're crippling ourselves you know and, and other individuals um, from having better lives due to knowing the truth and chasing the truth um, and I detest a lot of uh, other belief systems that you know, the, the ones in the last episode we talked about that don't move in the direction of truth, but they move away from it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I feel it's an absolute detriment to society and ourselves. Um, but one thing I, you know, I, I, I'd like to point out as well is that the truth, I feel like what's so nice and just what's also a good quality about it is that it's irrefutable in a lot of ways. Like it's not successfully refutable. Right. The, it, it defends itself based on its nature, you know. And I've heard similar claims about things made like that. Um, for instance, you hear God being uh, saying God is indefensible. You know, God is indefensible. You know, or self-evident is self, the term self-evident. Yeah, and whether that may or may not be true, it's like the truth. I really do believe is one entirely self-evident, and it's one of the you can't argue with it. No. Yeah. And uh, it doesn't matter how much you do argue with it. Eventually, you'll lose. Right, you'll lose. And and not only that, but it's, I think, people, human beings, do desire truth. We, I don't know, I, I, 
I've not given this too much thought, but I think human beings move, will naturally move towards truth. You know, they don't have to be prodded and poked to accept, you know, something is true or to move closer to the truth. I think that we seek it naturally in a lot of ways. We seek it naturally absent another bias in our way. Right. And in my mind, that's one of the qualities that makes the truth good and why it matters. Um, there's an innateness towards it, and I think that's what's interesting. Um, and we can talk more about that as we after we define what goodness is. Sure. Now, um, unless you have anything else to say about the uh, about truth in general, about truth in general, no, I think we can move on. Okay. Now, um, I did go to the Oxford this time. Okay. So, you know, you're learning. I, I did. I, I had my second cup of tea today and remembered. So, um, uh, so the word good has one of the longest definitions or longest list of definitions of any word I've seen before, uh, yeah. which makes a lot of sense. Good is very subjective. Well, and we use it in a lot of different ways, too. That is true. Because, you know, you might say good as in something tastes good. You're right. not making a moral claim about something. Sure. Um, and when you look at the uh, first definition, it says uh, to be desired or approved of. Right. Um, and that's interesting because it, you know, kind of blatantly shows the subjectivity there. Right. Well, and and I actually really like that definition because it covers all of the weird cases too. It covers the moral claims, but also the the little you know trivial claims. Right. Um, and then uh, the second definition. Uh, is having the required qualities or of a high standard. So that's a little more pointing towards objectivity, right? I feel like. However, you know, people could argue on what the objective standards for good yeah, are. Standards are subjective, but right. if you have particular requirements, that's pretty objective. Either it has the requirements or it doesn't. Right. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and dip into the third definition because it's really straightforward, is possessing or displaying moral virtue. Is that straightforward? Uh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. <laughs> but I had to bait you into it. Don't let me do it, I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that one just, you know, sets the can on the table and opens it for everybody. Um, so, yeah. So moral virtue, that's a that's a big old barrel of worms. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> So, but but again, it, it goes to the evidence of showing that good is incredibly subjective. So, if we're going to use it, I'm okay with using a subjective term as long as I feel like I can define what it means, you know, for myself. Sure. Um, for me, uh, something that is good, uh, I do like the third definition a lot, but for the sake of brevity, <laughs> I will... Uh, not just go with the third definition. I have a suspicion that if we look up moral and virtue in this dictionary, that we'll find some circular definitions. Yeah, that say, oh, these are things that are good. Right. <laughs> oh, well, what is good? <laughs> things of moral virtue. <coughs> Excuse me. But, uh, so for me, uh, to make things complicated, I guess, for me, I feel like goodness is actually a uh, strongly and innately tied to the truth. Um, so it would be weird for me to define the truth as being good because I think it, uh, goodness can be defined in terms of truth. Um, for instance, when it comes to making a claim, I would say any claim uh, that is concurrent, uh, you know, concurrent with the truth or closely enough can be made can be laid as good you know right whereas anything that is uh opposite or antithesis to the truth is bad so for me it's kind of a interesting thing i've given this a lot of thought over the week and it was really hard to think about you know how do you ascribe a quality of goodness to the truth without getting circular you know yeah well and and to put it bluntly you know the truth is what it is, whether you like it or not. Right. Um, and so, you know, asking asking whether it's good sort of depends on what you mean. You know. Right. If you know, it's it's good 
in the sense, as we already established, that um, it helps us achieve that, what that we it want. it helps us achieve our goals. It's right. good in that way. But, I mean, one could also say that, you know, death is a part of truth. Death is a thing that happens. Right. And we don't like that very much. Right. But, but the thing about it, too, is uh, I've also considered, you know, can good be ascribed to truth as well? Like, could you use that word to ascribe it? And, I, and the reason I thought about that was because can you ascribe bad to the word truth? For example, death. Death is a reality. Or it is reality. Um, well, I would say that death is bad. I wouldn't say that the fact that death is, you know, the reality is bad necessarily. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, doesn't make that doesn't make truth bad, because the truth of the matter is that perhaps death doesn't have to be a reality. Right. You know. So uh, for me, uh, I don't like being able to describe it in that way because there are those who like for instance blindly accept death as just even a part of reality and that it's good but you know for me I was like no I don't I don't agree that it's death is good in any way I think we should try to circumvent death right you know and I'm not saying that we should go out and perform vampiristic rituals and woo woo to try to avoid death you know we death is we should arm ourselves with the truth to try to overcome death right you know and so in that way, the truth is still good for me because I'm getting what I want. Uh, and I think that the only, I think I, I, I would argue that the reason truth is good is because it is the best and sometimes only way to get what you want. I would argue that it is the only way you can get what you, the only way to uh, intentionally get what you want is the truth. Um, I can think of some edge cases where that's not true. Yeah, let's get into those actually, because I like edge cases, and and because I just threw that definition out. I, if it's okay with you, I'd like to, you know, okay, sure. hammer it out for a little bit. So, a way in which you can intentionally get what you want without the truth. So, yes. I guess I guess this needs a couple of qualifiers then. Sure. Um, because I can think of a of a scenario in which someone gets what they want out of dumb luck, even though they were doing it wrong. Right. Well, that's why I said intentionally. They were still intentionally trying to achieve that goal, and they were under the impression that what they were doing mattered. And by dumb luck, they achieved it anyway. But the truth didn't really help them. Okay. Then what if I... Because when I said intentionally, I guess I you know, kind of halfway that word, or I may have misused it. Um, for me, when I said intentionally, I meant uh, intentionally as in you knew what you were doing and could guarantee it to be true. Or, or you, you knew what you were doing and could guarantee it to get what you want. Right. Like with high degree of confidence. Mm -hmm. Now, I, to that point, now that I think of it, that doesn't necessarily disqualify that scenario either. Right. There are plenty of people who it are It could just, just be very unlikely that you'll be wrong. Right. And uh, not only that, but people could be very uh, confident wrongfully so right in getting what they want um so then we'd have to add i'd have to add consistently to that because that would shear out the edge cases done by luck mm -hmm. you know so consistently and intentionally get what you want well if you if you actually have a hold on the real truth you will always get what you want in those circumstances every time now, okay, so now we're talking about if you could know the the whole truth, you would always or know what if you, you want. stumbled upon it, you know. There, Some... there, there may be a few things that we have figured out that are really true, um, and they'll always work. Okay, I can't name any of those off the top of my head, and I don't know if we, I don't know if it's a good idea for us to make claims of knowledge of the truth, of the real truth. Sure. Because we should always keep seeing if we got it wrong. But I wouldn't put it totally out of the realm of possibility that we have figured out at least something that's actually true. Okay. So, 
but in the back to our edge case scenario, someone dumb luckily not knowing that they were uh, that brings up actually an interesting thing. If you had stumbled upon a nugget of the truth like that, would you you would have to know, right, that you've done that? No, you don't have to know. Okay. See, I'm, what I'm saying, okay. Then that's, you that's, can be unaware that you figured out something that's really true. Okay. You will still be very competent in it because every time you try it, it works. Hmm. But, well, this is assuming that you reach this conclusion by science, in which case every scientific conclusion is at best a tentative guess about how things work. Right. Hmm. Okay. And, and you'll I, just be perpetually tentative about this. <laughs> and it will never get overthrown. Right. Okay. I see what you're saying there. Right. right. I accept that uh I accept that, that causes problems in the edge case in that case. Mm -hmm. So to back off of it a little bit, in that case, you can still benefit from the truth. Uh you can still you can still benefit with you. You can still do good without the truth in that case. I'm not sorry. You, you, you can still do truth. Yeah, you can still get what you want without knowing the truth or without. Well, and indeed we do. Yeah. Uh, well, let's take the example of classical physics. Mm -hmm. We did lots of stuff under classical physics and got what we want. Classical physics is wrong. Yeah. We know this. We can prove it through experiment. Right. Um, but it's right enough that we can do a lot of stuff with it. Ooh, good old right enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know you can appreciate it right enough. I sure can. Um, so, so sure, yeah, you can you can still get what you want without actually knowing the real truth. We we did it for a long time. Okay. It's just that eventually you'll want something. Try to get it with the method that you think is true, and you'll fail. Right. So, no, having discussed that, do you think that it's possible to ascribe the quality of goodness or badness to truth? No. I think that the truth is kind of neutral. indifferent and neutral. Yeah, it just kind of is. It's kind of like a, uh, and I'm not saying it is a, like a physical object because sure. you know we've kind of dismissed that it is not a physical entity necessarily. Right. Um, but you know, like a chair, you know, just a chair. And I tell you, Jim, you know, when I say that word. I, image of what a chair is pops into your mind, mm -hmm. you know, that a chair isn't inherently good or bad, um, free of its purpose, you know. Right. Um, there, yeah, there's nothing intrinsically good or bad about it, or right. even useful, or, or something not as, as bold to say about it, until we apply a purpose to it. Exactly. And so... Or something applies a purpose to it. In that case, um, could you make the argument that can the truth be used for bad? Can the truth be used for bad? Yes. Okay. I mean, you can use something that's true, discovered scientifically, to, say, create a poison and, mm -hmm. and hurt a lot of people. Okay. So in that way, so I guess in that case, the truth really is neutral and it does, it, it, it's not so much that the truth is good or that the truth is bad, it's that the truth is neutral and it's what you can do with it, you know, uh, it's what you do with it, uh, or once, you know, once you find a quality of, you know. And this is kind of true of all tools at humans' disposal, really. Yeah. I can't really think of a, of anything that we would call a tool which is not neutral. Right. They're not really good or bad. You can put them all to work doing good or bad. Hmm. I think one thing, though, that's different about, that separates the truth from uh, human tools is human tools are created with Yeah, I guess I shouldn't mind. call the truth a human tool. Right. I guess a um, knowledge is a tool. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Um, because when We've you talk throwing about, around the word truth, and a lot of times I think we meant to say knowledge. That's right. I think, I think you're right. Well, the knowledge of the truth, I right. think, is what we meant. Um, and so, like, <laughs> uh, knowing about something isn't necessarily good or bad. It's what you decide right. to use with knowing about that information. And so, I, I think 
you know, I wouldn't say it's been an utter waste of time to try to ascribe good or bad to the word truth, but because we arrived at the uh, the solution, the uh, conclusion that um, you just can't because it's not how that works. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It does, it's not ascribable those qualities. Right. So, okay. The truth matters, and I think uh, after this talking about what we talked about, whether or not you can ascribe true goodness to truth. What we really discovered is that uh, I would like to claim that the truth or approaching the truth can uh, amplify good or bad. Like, the, like moving closer to the truth can equip individuals with the ability to pursue any goal better Yes. So, and whether, whether that's good or bad or neutral. Goal, exactly. So, I guess the real, you know, so now let's talk about, you know, striving for a goal. Um, now, does this, some people I feel like would make the argument that, well, because the worst bad is really bad and the best good is really good, People still tend to look at the worst. They would much rather avoid a smaller chance of the worst bad for a larger chance of the best good. Do you get what I'm saying? I think I get what you're saying. Like, can you like, rephrase? Sure, let me rephrase. Can I put it in terms of an example? Sure. Okay. In terms of an example, let's say it's CERN, you know, particle, you know, the particle colliders. Uh, Large Hadron Collider? Yes. Okay. Say they, someone there hypothesized that if you take this, you know, cocktail of uh, subatomic particles, and you can combine them just right, or by using it, you know, sidebar, this isn't real science, I'm just... I was about to say physics words, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> physics words, um, <laughs> but still, and there could be an experiment performed that if the outcome of that experiment could potentially lead for a way to solve the necessity problem. We could, through that experiment, acquire the knowledge of how to generate or to convert matter and and energy, you know, perfectly efficiently or right. with maximum efficiency allowable by reality. Mm -hmm. That would be the best invent. That would be the best discovery slash invention. I would say ever. Yeah. At that point, mm -hmm. because it solves everything as far as human problems of existence. Basically. Yeah. Basically. Uh, biological needs versus her existence, I guess. So once we've done that, now there, there's a 50% chance it'll do this, right? Now the other 48% chance of the outcome is that it will fizzle and we just wasted time and money on it. But it's money we've already been allotted. But there is still a 2% outcome that we will literally annihilate the universe. All of it. Okay? Okay. Now, uh, there's a huge, there are a bunch of people who would say it's not worth it, you know, because there, there's still a chance that he could do the most evil if you, if you tried to chase that knowledge. If you tried to move that much closer to the truth through science, you could potentially kill everything and everyone forever, you know. Right. And so it's not worth it. Well, what do you think? What do I think? Right. And this is an edge case that yeah, I'm going to go this into. This is later. an edge case. For, we're we're going for extremes here. Yes, I think, I think I would err on the side of caution, personally. Really, really. Uh, so you would not pursue the truth in that way, not in that way. If we could find another experiment to try to do it, then we could try to do that. But yeah, I think that. Um, well, I, I'm I'm thinking of okay, we annihilate the entire universe. This is utter destruction of everything. Yes. For all intents and purposes, infinite badness. Yes. Okay. Now, we create perfect efficiency uh, conversion tools. This is good, but still finite good. Is it, though? It, it is, because we, we still don't necessarily... There, there will still be problems, even, even if this is the case. Sure, but we've moved... But there's a much higher chance that we get that much closer. Sure. Well, and, and we have extended, we, we have probably extended human longevity 
farther than we can comprehend by doing that. Not only but, that, but we still have not solved all the problems. Sure. And so, so it's still a finite good. So finite good versus infinite bad. Eh. Like, I'm just thinking cost benefit. That's okay. all. Risk reward. Well, very low risk. Very high chance of reward. High chance of reward, but the thing that is risked is so great. Okay. So in that case, we would not seek that we would not seek the truth that way. We would have to try to find some other channel by which to do it. Next question, can I modify the scenario? One one way. Okay. It's scientifically provable that there is no other way to verify mm. this truth. That is the only way it can be verified is through this experiment. And once verified, it, if it works, you could then be certain that it will work every time. And if it doesn't, you can be certain that it, if, if it doesn't, you'll be certain that it never works because, well, destroy universe. Right. Or, you know, it fizzles and you know that it won't work. You know, I know this is a hyper unrealistic scenario. Yeah. And, and honestly, now my, my, uh, my brain is trying to think of holes to poke in this rather than actually addressing the question. Sure. Um, but say in the hypothetical, I, I was able to fill all the right holes and you had to <laughs> make the decision. But, and and the, the point I'm trying to get to is, you know, by erring on the side of caution, I feel like we intentionally slow our push towards the truth in that way. Well, and we sort of do this every day anyway. You know, let's think about, say, drug testing. We we can know very quickly what its effect on humans will be if we just test them on humans. Right. We don't do this at first because we're cautious about it. Sure. Uh, be, because on the chance that we're wrong, which is not insignificant, um, bad things can happen that we don't want to happen. Okay. You know, people could could die um, that shouldn't. So would you say the pursuit of the truth is, we've already said that it is good, but the method by which you pursue the truth can be good or bad? Right. Okay. Hmm. Well, yeah, okay, yeah, and, and it comes down to, you know, specific methods. You know, we, I, I'm sure you and I could think of limitless experiments that we could run, but that would be highly unethical to run. Oh, definitely. Sure. So I that's, actually just saw one, thinking. but yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. Okay. So I guess the point I'm trying to get to is um, we've said blanketly that, you know, moving closer to the truth is good and that knowing the truth is uh, can be, you know, good as well. I'm trying to come up for a justification, I suppose, um, as for why you would want to seek the truth in the most efficient way possible, you know, because that's that's kind of the goal of, you know, because if we don't want to do that, then we would alter our belief system to match, you know, uh, we should alter our belief systems to match, you know, I feel like. Mm -hmm. If you're, if the goal of your belief system is to ascertain efficient and Efficient or truth, effective? Efficient or effective? But you said efficient. Did I say the efficient? most efficient way possible? Sorry, effective. Yes. Actually, I think that actually might be the defining uh, characteristic, efficiency over effectiveness. Because when you think about it, in a hypothetical scenario, uh, let's take Nazi Germany, for instance. Mm -hmm. The Nazi, the, the German... The, the Nazis, I can't say the Germans because, well, they, they, weren't were, all Nazis. they weren't all Nazis. Germans weren't all Nazis, and there were a few non German Nazis. Yeah. AKA Hitler. Austrian. Yeah. That's true. Anyway, you know, short history sidebar. Yeah. The Nazis. The Nazis, in the, for the worst reasons possible, in some ways, that they, they moved a lot closer to the truth about a lot of things. And it was arguably very efficient if you don't factor in the cost of human life. Right. They did it very quickly. The scientific advancements made by the Nazis were uh, much more broad leaps than many scientific advances before. Mm -hmm. Especially, you know, you, you know, uh, rockets going into space. That all kind of starts with the Nazis. You know, no one likes to talk about it, but... Uh, a lot of Nazi scientists got grubbed up and moved to NASA mm -hmm. after World War II because, and but they were able to do these experiments because they used human test subjects, you know, and 
did very unethical things, right? Right. So in that case, I would say um, efficient, but not effective. In well, it it was effective because well, we did figure things out. Like that that's the measure of effectiveness is did we do it? Did we actually do the job we set out to do? Right. In this case, we're talking about the the micro task of figuring out things that are true by science, not the macro task of genocide. But <laughs> yeah. Um, so now <laughs> we clearly don't do that, <laughs> or supposedly clearly don't keep doing that. You know, right. we we, we is, agree we ought not to exactly because of the value of human life right. and uh, the rights therefore afforded. You know, because they're humans. Mm -hmm. um, TM. <laughs> humans TM. Okay. <laughs> so uh, in that case, should we really be defining our ideal belief system that way? A system by that moves you closer to the truth that's more effective. Is that, is that the goal then? I guess this is where we get into um, that. So, so the measure of a belief system, I think we established last week, is how effectively it can bring you to the truth. Yes. Okay. That, that is looking at it from a purely neutral perspective. We have, we have one particular measure that we care about. Does it move you to the truth? Now, what we have, what we have sidestepped is ethics. Um, yeah. You know, so to have a belief system by which you can effectively reach the truth, even if it's more effective, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to define my way into uh, into not coupling science to ethics. Why? Or or at least coupling them in a way that that makes a little bit more sense and doesn't defeat the goal of science, right? Um, so let's think about that. Let's think about what what's what are we what are we trying to do? We're trying to figure out the truth. Right. I guess we're we're trying to figure out the truth, but also in a way that doesn't result in disaster. Right. Hmm. It gets complicated. Right. But I think and I think it's worthy to look through this complication though, and then figure it out because. I want to be able to justify why the truth matters so much. Like what? Like it, it has to have a good enough reason. For, you know, you you can clearly state why it's good. You know, we've already said. You know, you get what you want to a higher degree of uh, accuracy, right? Or you know, less effort. I would even argue because if you could do it right the first time, you can do it with as minimal effort as possible, very efficiently, right? I keep. I can dispute that a little bit. That's fine, but you know. Uh, but yes, I see where you're going. Where I'm going with In it. most cases, yes. Well, so, yeah, and doing it the right way, sure. Well, if you do it the right way, by definition, you've done all the work. It's done. Right. If you do it the almost right way, you might have to do more work later. Right. Um, so, uh, but I also wouldn't deny that it's a, it's a, it's a hell of a lot of work. Pardon the language, but mm -hmm. I, I'm, it is. Um, to move towards the truth. And it's easy for a human brain to not care. Yeah. And, uh, and it's, it's easy for human brains to not even give consideration as to why. The, you know, that's what I'm, you know, we're trying to get to. You know, this truth thing, is, it's got to be worth all of these. You know, and I guess what I'm trying to establish why it matters by evaluating what it's worth. Like, what are we willing to, like, what... What is the price for truth? Like, you, could you put a price on truth? You know, and I don't mean the literal price, but you understand sure. what I'm talking about. You know, because clearly, people, some people dedicate their entire lives. Sure. You know, um, countless scientists, and even I will give some credit. You know, before science, religious figures dedicated their whole lives to the pursuit of the, air quotes, truth, you know, supposedly. Mm -hmm. That was the stated goal. Whether you did that or not, you know, if people are willing to... Well, and I, I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt that that is what they were trying to do. Right. Whether they were doing it effectively or not. Sure. Um, and we look at that as noble. Right. 
you know, maybe if we looked at why we thought it was a noble thing, we could find some stock as to why the truth matters. Mm -hmm. If you're pursuing it as a noble task, why is it noble? And then for those reasons, maybe we can extrapolate to why the truth is good or why it matters. Why at seeking least. the truth is good. Right. Well, would, I would make the argument that if you are seeking it, uh, it is, it is, uh, it matters at least. If you are putting forth effort, it matters. Mm -hmm. Um, and maybe it is the fact that we seek it that it matters. You know, when we talk about ascribing meaning to things, uh, cause like, well, yeah, well, there's something to be said about that. You know, why, let's think about disaster. Why, why does it matter that, uh, that we don't, you know, start dropping bombs all over the place and see what happens? Yeah. Because we don't want it to, you know, we don't, we don't want that to happen. Right. Well, assuming that it kills people. Sure. You know, we, we don't want this outcome. Right. Um, why don't we want it? Because we don't, you know, this is, this is sort of just a, uh, a, a, a part of being human, you know, we we can't really comprehend why we want things. We just do. And I'm sure we could justify why, or offer justification. Well, and that's why we why. can have disagreements about what's good and bad, mm -hmm. um, you know, because sometimes the things that we want don't line up right. Um, and so we'll, we'll disagree on what we want, and thereby cast different judgments about what the other is doing to achieve something they want. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and roll back on that. Okay. Why, you know, to what I'd said, we believe that seeking the truth is noble or mm -hmm. good. And it's respectable and ethically a good thing. Right. You know. It, just the pure act in its neutrality is good. Right. Why? Why? You know, and I feel like there is, uh, we, we do ascribe meaning to the truth in addition to the fact that it's objective. Or that we ascribe meaning to the pursuit of the truth, obviously. Um, and I feel it might have a lot to do with what the truth enables be done. Um, I think there is something in humanity that, as well, or in human beings, that you, by knowing the truth, you can overcome negativity and things that you do not like, right? Or by seeking the truth, you can sometimes, you know, like if you look in religious cases, for example, they believe that moving towards the truth leads to a better life, just intrinsically, mm -hmm. right? You know, by believing these things, you will have a better life. You know, in all areas, you know, to some degree. And I would make the case that, uh, you know, that's true regardless of whether in the religious context or not. And I feel like, um, you know, when we look at it on an individual basis, it's obvious, right? Because you can get what you want, you know. And I feel like in a way, those who seek the truth, it always comes with the idea that you share the truth, right? Right. And because you share the truth, you allow everybody to be better at getting what they want. And I think the reason it gets depressing or gets, you know, apprehensive at some point is when we talk about the grand scenarios where it's like, you know, hey, we could give you the ability to do anything you wanted or to have infinity, infinity, in practically infinite material, you know, and uh, capability. But... And everyone, but everyone kind of starts fretting at that point, you know, because uh, I think there's a competing value system between everyone being able to get what they want and everyone not wanting to be at the mercy of someone who can get what they want, you know, through them, you know. Hmm. I don't know. I feel like I kind of talked my way out of it as well. It's hard. I, I'm, I'm starting to question whether or not, uh, I do think that the truth matters, but I, I worry that we care about the truth so much is because we we know that it's inevitable and it exists objectively, right? Could it be competitive in nature? Like, we want to know the truth because we don't want someone else to know the truth first. Do you ever think that might be a part of it? 
I don't have that feeling personally. So or that it would be fair if everybody knew the truth. It would be fair. I think it would be fair if everybody knew the truth. Right. And I think the fact is that the truth uh, is discoverable, not inventable. Right. Right. Um, we can invent ways to describe the truth. Right. The truth itself is discovered. Right. Um, but being able to, dis you know, the, the people who discovered the largest sections of truth have always gained great power afterwards. You know, or maybe not always, but not always. But there's a, I think I think there's a correlation. Like for instance, discovering the truth of, uh, you know, uh, when we talk about like atomic physics, you know, mm -hmm. and we got closer to knowing the truth about how atoms worked and how they reacted with each other. Right. Once we did that we then unlocked the capability of developing a nuclear weapon or an atomic weapon in that case. Right. Ten years of unrivaled power in that case came to that came to the United States after knowing that. Mm -hmm. Right? Now it's what you do with that once you figure it out that's good or bad we talked about, but I think it matters because uh, the truth matters because of what it, uh, of its of its just the power it can delegate. Knowing the truth, the power it can it can delegate to an individual, mm -hmm. you know, or the uh, capabilities it provides. Um, for instance, no matter, we had all of them, we've had since the, for 50 years at that point, the material to develop, you know, an atomic bomb. Right, just not the knowledge on how to build it. Right. Or and the knowledge that it could be built. Right, you know. So, I think it matters because it's, it is in a way unpredictable, but it's powerful. Right. Well, as the saying goes, knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. And moving closer to the truth. And and I think knowledge is power, but I think you could modify that a little bit because knowledge in that case assumes it's true. Right? Yes. Because you can know It's not really false. knowledge if it's not true. Right. Okay, fair enough. So, so of course, talking about knowledge is all tentative anyway. Right. It, it, in this case, it only implies that you know the truth about something. Right. And so knowing the truth is power. I think you could substitute there. Mm -hmm. Or knowing truth is power. Right. And so in our individual quests to ex you know, expand our ability to get what we want, we also chase the truth. And I think uh, what, what's interesting about the truth as well is once the truth is known, I don't know that it can be lost to an individual. Mm. Yeah, well... Normally. Normally. Uh, so, I think that's why it matters. It's for, it's, it matters because of what it can enable. Right. Right. And I don't, I don't innately say that it is good or bad. I think that originally I thought that it was good because of what it could enable, the good it could enable. Right. So, that's interesting. And then, and my next topic was to talk about how would knowing, you know, truth change a person, you know, or how would, uh, we've already said that the truth is unknowable, right? Right. The objective truth. Mm -hmm. um, so there's no sense in going into, well, what if you could, because that's, a... I guess maybe I can revise that a little bit in light of what was said earlier. In principle, I don't see why the truth is necessarily unknowable. But we won't ever know whether we actually know the whole truth. Yeah, it's kind of paradoxical. We're always on the verge of, well, not on the verge of, we're, we're scientifically, we remain open to the possibility of finding new data which conflicts with our conclusions. So having, you know, if you never know when you've actually collected all available data, or all, well, not just available, but all actual data, you don't know that you know the truth. Right. And, you know, it, it's it's interesting, because if you knew the truth, then you would know you knew the truth, right? Well, yeah, so then we get into paradoxes about infinity. Exactly. So, uh, therefore you can't, because <laughs> it's paradoxical in that right. case. So, but like we said, good enough, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. 
So let's sum up what we've covered so far, just so that we're clear and on the same page. Okay. I feel like that's one thing we haven't done bef as much in our more recent talks. Is reconciling. Yeah, reconciling a little bit and laying it out in bullet points. Mm -hmm. um, so we had, we have our definition of truth, which is reality. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, my definition of truth, which I proposed last week, was the set of true propositions. Okay. Okay, so the this, collection of all things that are true. Okay, the collection of all things that are true, um, which is interchangeable with reality, because uh, if something's true, then it's real. Right. Uh, a quality of the truth is that it is neither it is neutral in so far as subjectivity, good or bad. I don't know if I like that phrasing. How would you phrase know. it? You're better with the words. I would say we have no way by which to assign goodness or badness as a property of the truth. Okay. And we have determined that the pursuit of the truth is good. Right. Right. Normally. Normally. Um, or at least admirable. But we uh, caveat to uh, the caveat to the truth is not ascribable good or bad mm -hmm. that the truth would enable individuals to uh generally uh amplify the good or bad they would do right right and in that way if the knowing the truth or the truth is a source of power right right um okay so that's that's what we've got so far, mm -hmm. that set of information. And I'm actually kind of okay. Uh, do you feel there's anything open-ended about that that you'd want to cover a little bit more before we move on or to kind of iron out? No, but I think that we're we're sort of a little bit leading into morality and ethics. I agree. So I, I think that's really the only thing that's open-ended about it. That's, of course, way too long to just jump into right now. We have five minutes. <laughs> we have five minutes. Let's solve morality. <laughs> Yeah, but um, I think um, morality and ethics would be an interesting place to go from here. Mm -hmm. I do know, um, maybe not to spoil, but we have something planned for December, right? Right. Um, more to be said on that later, but just to drop the Easter egg and maybe the I don't know. I don't want to go into it right now. No. Uh, I want to keep it a secret. Mm -hmm. I like suspense. I want people to wonder um, as well. But uh, this does mark our fourth episode. This is the fifth, actually. Our fifth. Okay. I, I forget because the first one to me is kind of like a the not episode yeah. or the zero episode. We still had a topic, though. We did. We did. Um, we kind of circled back to it on our fifth episode a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. No, sort of. We talked about the truth. You know, well, we random. mentioned the truth. We didn't really talk about it then. The topic for episode one was ideal discourse. Oh, and who we were and what we did. Right. Right. So. Um, so we've been doing this for over a full month now. Uh, mm -hmm. And i got to say, um, I've really enjoyed it. Me too. Um if you were just wanting to hear about the uh, what we were, the main topic, you can go ahead and feel free to leave. Um, right. <laughs> but uh, I, I did want to bring it up that we really do appreciate everybody who watches. Um, and because, you know, we never really intended for this to be uh, for anyone else but ourselves inherently. Right. This is sort of just keeping a log of the, the things that we talk about. Right. And I think it's uh, it's been a way for us to... Um, been an effective way for us to maintain uh, a friendship as well, mm -hmm. I think. So, um, but that being said, you know, it's hard to not notice that people are also paying attention uh, as well. And uh, while we do appreciate you, we, we never want anyone to feel obligated to be here. We want you to enjoy this if you do, but keep in mind that we do this for the truth's sake and our sakes mm -hmm. as well. So... Um, and we always encourage feedback, um, if not about how we do the podcast, uh, necessarily, uh, about the topics. Um, 
I myself even, when I go back and... Have you re-listened to any of the uh, earlier ones we've done so yes. far? I, I'll be honest, I, I re-listen to all of them at least once a week. Um, okay, not quite that much. But it, it's interesting because I can, it allows me to scrutinize and I've, I've come to realize there are a lot of things... I, I catch myself listening to them and saying, you know, what, what about this? You know, yeah. how did you not think of that? <laughs> um, reliving those, I had an argument before, uh, and after the argument was over, like, dang it, I should have said that instead. Right, the, uh, the shower thoughts about, yeah. uh, about arguments. But I think that's good, and I do think um, it would be good for us to maybe sit down and revisit some of our missed topics every so often, uh, periodically, or things that we've... Or maybe not biggest regrets, but like yeah, are... I thought about that myself about about periodically listening again, coming up with the things that should have been raised, you know, uh, uh, or what, uh, you know, objections to certain things, or uh, or just questions we left unanswered, um, and try to try to hit those. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think we might do that. Um. And if, and if anyone else has any, uh, I, I really wish some people would let us know what they were thinking about it too, because we, we, well, ideal discourse is between two people. It, when you're decomposing it afterwards and really thinking about it, it, it can be helpful to get a different perspective in that case. Sure. Yeah. The discourse itself is best between two people, but anyone can do an analysis. Right. And, uh, Maybe from providing their perspective, help us move closer to the truth of what it would be to do a good podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that being all said, um, I think that's pretty much wrapping it up for us today. Mm -hmm. Unless you have anything else you want to dig into? Nope, I think we're ready to move on to next week. All right. Philosophers. Philosophers. <laughs>